Hi guys, so today we're talking about kinesiology, which means the study of the mechanics of body movement. So we're going to start with the terms that describe the positioning on the human person. So this is going to be our anatomical position. So his hands are forward, feet forward, facing forward. And so if we go somewhere towards the head, we call that superior. And if we go down towards the bottom, we call that inferior. And then whenever we say like the forward side that's going to be anterior or ventral and then whenever we go backwards that's called posterior or dorsal and so then whenever you get into the limbs if you go towards the body that's called proximal and if you go away from the body that means distal so any time that you try and describe a position on the body, you have to do it relative to a different body part. So for example, if we have the feet, the feet would be inferior to the knee. And so it has to be inferior to something. This can also be distal. And so it just kind of depends on what you're trying to describe. Another directional set would be superficial versus deep. Superficial would be whenever you come closer to the surface of the body and deep would be further into the body. So like your stomach would be deep to your skin. So all of these come in pairs. And so whenever you're talking, you can say like anterior versus posterior. And so they all come in sets. So superior goes with inferior proximal goes with distal, anterior goes with posterior, superficial goes with deep. And so you can always describe things in two different ways. So for example, back to this knee. So you can say that the foot is distal to the knee, or you can say that the knee is proximal to the foot. Another one of these sets is medial, which means towards the midline and lateral, which means away from the midline. And so we have superior, which means above, inferior, which means below. We have medial, which means towards the midline, and we have lateral, which means away from the midline. We have proximal, which means towards the body, which would be like a limb, and distal, that means away from the body. Then we have superficial, which means the outermost part of the body. And then we have deep, which means the innermost part of the body. And then we have anterior and posterior, which if you were looking at the side of the body, anterior would be towards the front, posterior would be towards the back. Two more directional terms that are relevant to massage therapy are supine and prone. And so supine is whenever you have the person laying down but their face up. And then prone is whenever you have the person laying down, face down. So whenever we talk about kinesiology and movements, we talk about things like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, inversion, eversion, protraction, and retraction. And so these movements are all movements that happen at synovial joints. Whenever we talk about movements, we always talk about movements relative to a joint. So you always say the movement at the joint. So for example, you would say flexion at the elbow. This is an important point because a lot of people get mixed up with joints versus muscles. And so joints can flex and extend. Muscles can contract and stretch. And so a muscle cannot flex and extend. That, it, that only happens at the joint. So when we're looking at the elbow, for example, flexion happens at the elbow joint because of the biceps brachii contracting. And so the muscle causes the action, but the action happens at the joint.
So whenever you talk about movements in kinesiology, they are always related to a plane of motion. And so the planes of motion are the sagittal plane, the frontal plane, and then transverse plane. So the sagittal plane cuts you left from right, so straight down the middle. So if you're straight down the midline, it's called the mid-sagittal plane. Any of these planes can move uh, forward, backward, whichever way that you want. They're just there to describe dimensions. And so the sagittal plane cuts you left from right. Any time that you have flexion or extension, that always happens in the sagittal plane. The frontal plane cuts you front from back. And abduction and adduction always happen in the frontal plane. The transverse plane cuts you top from bottom and rotation always happens in the transverse plane. So whenever we talk about the planes of motion, there's also an axis of rotation. So the axis of rotation is always perpendicular to the plane of motion. So for example, in the sagittal plane, you would have the mediolateral axis of rotation. Because the sagittal plane comes this way, the perpendicular line would come this way. Whenever you use directional terms for this, this way, means lateral and this way means medial towards the midline and away from the midline and so this axis would be the medial lateral axis or what we call the ml axis in the frontal plane we have the antero posterior axis because the frontal plane cuts you front from back and so perpendicular to this would be a line this way and since in our directions, this is anterior, this is posterior, that's why it's called the anteroposterior axis of rotation, or what we call the AP axis. The transverse plane cuts the body top from bottom, and so perpendicular to this plane would be a line here, which is called the longitudinal axis. So whenever we talk about movements in kinesiology relative to planes and the axis of rotation, we talk about the movements in a certain plane. And so the sagittal plane cuts you left from right, but it's going frontwards to backwards. And so flexion and extension would be in the sagittal plane. And so for flexion of the elbow, for example, the black dot here shows you the axis of rotation, which is going straight through the joint. And then there's flexion in the sagittal plane at the elbow. So the movement occurs around the axis in the plane. The frontal plane works the same way, and so this picture shows abduction, which is the shoulder going away from the midline. And so the orange dot is your axis of rotation, that's where the movement goes around on the joint. And then this movement is in the frontal plane. So rotation happens in the transverse plane. And so the pink dot is your axis of rotation. This is the top of the head. And your neck moves in rotation side to side. And so that would be like shaking your head no. And so that movement happens in the transverse plane around the longitudinal axis of rotation. Movements that happen in the sagittal plane include flexion, extension, hyperextension, dorsiflexion, and plantar flexion. Flexion happens when an angle at a joint is getting smaller. Extension happens whenever the angle at the joint is getting larger. Hyperextension happens whenever a joint goes past 180 degrees. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion happen at the ankle. Dorsiflexion is whenever the toes are pointed towards the anterior leg, and plantar flexion is whenever the toes are pointed towards the posterior leg. Movements that happen in the frontal plane include abduction, adduction, elevation, depression, inversion and eversion, lateral pelvic tilt, and protraction and retraction. Abduction happens when a joint is moving away from the center of the body. Adduction happens whenever a joint is moving back towards the center of the body. 
Elevation happens whenever a joint is moving superiorly. Depression happens whenever a joint is moving inferiorly. Inversion and eversion happen at the ankle. Inversion would be like walking on the outsides of your feet. Eversion is like walking on the insides of your feet. Lateral pelvic tilt happens at the pelvis. This is whenever the pelvis tilts towards the right or towards the left. Protraction and retraction happens at the scapula. Protraction is also called abduction, and so it's whenever the scapula moves away from the center line. And retraction is also called adduction, which is whenever the scapula more moves back towards the midline of the body. Movements that happen in the transverse plane include right and left rotation, internal and external rotation, pronation and supination, and horizontal adduction and abduction. Right and left rotation is just like it sounds. It's whenever the body rotates right to left. So this happens at the trunk and at the neck. Internal and external rotation happens at the shoulder and at the hip. Internal rotation is whenever the joint rotates inwards towards the body. External rotation happens when the joint rotates outwards or away from the body. Internal and external rotation can also be referred to as medial and lateral rotation. So medial rotation would be any rotation at the joint that goes towards the midline. And lateral rotation would be any rotational movement at a joint that goes away from the midline. Pronation and supination happens at the radial ulnar joint and in the ankles. Supination at the radial ulnar joint is like whenever you're holding a bowl of soup in your hand. Pronation is whenever you turn that bowl of soup over. Pronation and supination at the ankle is a little bit more complex, so it's a combination of movements. So for supination at the ankle, it's a combination of inversion, adduction, and plantar flexion. And then pronation at the ankle is a combination of eversion, abduction, and dorsiflexion. Horizontal adduction and abduction happen at the hip and the shoulder joints. Horizontal adduction and abduction happens whenever either the shoulder or the hip is moved into 90 degrees abduction and then is moved in the transverse plane towards the front or the back of the body.